Hello, everybody. Hello, BlizzCon. Welcome to the Diablo Immortal What's Next panel. My name is Wyatt Chang. I'm the lead designer on Diablo Immortal, and I'm joined by two senior designers from the Diablo Immortal team. Hi, I'm Chris Sirhut, a senior designer on Diablo Immortal. Hi, everybody. I'm Matthew Berger, also a senior designer. All right, let's get started. Diablo Immortal takes place in between the events of Diablo II, Lord of Destruction, and Diablo III. At the end of Diablo II, Lord of Destruction, we saw the World Stone get destroyed. At the beginning of Diablo III, we see Tyrael falling from heaven. How do we get from the shattered World Stone to the falling star? And what else is going on? There's a full 20-year gap between these two events where all kinds of things are happening in Sanctuary. What was Deckard Cain doing prior to taking a young girl named Leah under his care? We know a bit about his time with her, but what happened during the years before that? What about Magda and Adria? What kind of schemes were they up to? How about the formation of the Demon Hunters? You'll journey with a young Vala and see her being trained by her master, Joseph. And of course, let's not forget about Baal, the Lord of Destruction. Baal's corruption and his corrupting essence had corrupted the World Stone. And knowing this, Tyriel shattered the World Stone. When the World Stone was shattered, it wasn't completely destroyed. Fragments of the World Stone survived, and they were scattered throughout Sanctuary. Wherever they landed, corruption and death followed. And you guys are going to go there. <laughs> In Diablo Immortal, at launch, we will have eight public zones for you to explore. We're going to go from the jungles of the Biofen to the desert of the Shassar Sea, from the tomb of Fahir to the cold wastes of the frozen tundra. Now, for those of you who heard, Matthew said, at launch. It is our plan to have Diablo Immortal be an ongoing game. All right, let's have a look at some of these zones. Let's start with the Biofen. The Biofen is filled with everything to ruin your day, from a mostly abandoned, ancient, semi-hunted temples to giant mosquitoes, maggots, fallen, and over-aggressive fetish monsters. Here you'll help the leader of Port Justinian deal with that fetish problem, meet a mysterious wizard, and help a scholar in distress. Now, Sanctuary is huge, and you're going to be going to some new zones, such as the Biofen, and then also returning favorites, such as the Frozen Tundra. The frozen tundra is located next to Mount Ariad, close to the location where Tyriel shattered the World Stone. The devastation of the World Stone and of Mount Ariad is merely five years old. It is a fresh scar on this land and on the barbarian people. Now, the frozen tundra is a harsh land. Surviving here is a struggle against nature in the very best of times. And these will not be the best of times, far from it. From the frozen tundra, we go to the desert. We go to Zoltan Kuhl's library. This ancient repository of knowledge is replete with powerful artifacts and the many traps that are there to keep them out of prying hands. You think it's going to be the real Zoltan Cool there? No, no. What do you think? Some kind of imposter? An imposter Zoltan Cool, really? You think so? I don't think so. Wyatt? Imposter Zoltan Cool? In the, in the library? Is this, have we been here before? I feel like we've been here before. The, these are not the same uh, ARC library as we visited in Diablo 3. Okay. This is a new area. Zoltan Kuhl actually had a number of archives stashed across 
all of Sanctuary. And this is a previously unvisited one. So what you're saying is that Zoltan Kool is some sort of magical hoarder. <laughs> all right. He has archives all over the place. All right. The Mad Mage himself is not going to be present within this library. However, it, as is always the case with him, Zoltan Kool has left behind suitably dangerous defenses. In fact, he has left behind the kind of defenses that only a true egomaniac would employ. And caught in the middle of it all is a family of unfortunate thieves who thought they could make a good score, and some cultists trying to get their hands on a Worldstone shard. It's a recipe for disaster, so the perfect place for you to vacation. When you come for a Worldstone shard, but you stay because everything's trying to kill you. All right, so these are the shared public outdoor zones that you'll be able to see in Diablo Immortal. As you wander the outdoor world, you have the opportunity to come across other players. These types of shared organic interactions change the texture of your game. World of Warcraft players will probably remember the first time they fought Hogger. Ooh. You got in over your head, you probably died a few times, but then some other players showed up. You joined forces, Hogger died, you got sweet loot, and you made some new friends along the way. That's the experience you want for Diablo Immortal. So we have the shared outdoor zones, but sometimes you want a more intimate experience. So we also have the instanced dungeons. These are four player experiences for you and some close friends. Let's have a look at these starting at the Kikaris Rapids. The Kikaris Rapids, deep within the biofed, this river snakes its way through a jungle brimming with monstrosities, from bog lurkers to the aforementioned horrible little fetish creatures that I really, really hate and don't ever want to play against ever again. You mean these guys here? Yeah, I don't no, like them. These guys, I think, are the best. They remind me of playing D2 and making my way through the jungles outside Kurost. No, fetishes really are the worst. Yeah, they're the worst. And you know what would make this even worse? More fetishes. OK, put a pin in that. <laughs> what would make this even worse is standing on a rickety piece of wood, going down a river towards a certain horrific watery grave while these tiny little demons are trying to fill you with their darts or gently donate their swords to you pointy end first. How, how kind of them. How kind <laughs> of them. All right, all right. How about something more pleasant? Something quieter? Maybe a tomb. Tombs are nice. No fetishes, no rapids. No rapids. The tomb of Fahir. It's skeletons, it's spiders, it's treasure room, not a treasure chest, not a measly little treasure chest, a treasure room. A room brimming with golden glowing treasure chests filled with loot. A room defended by mummies, maybe on fire. But that's not going to stop adventures such as yourselves. Mummies on fires, no, no panic. But I get it. Sometimes we want simpler things in Diablo, quieter things. Quieter Diablo things. quiet. A dark tower, perhaps, some cultists, a few rogues. I, I know where you're going. We yeah? are also going to the Forgotten Tower. Many of you will remember the Forgotten Tower from Diablo 2. Except in Diablo 2, you slayed the Countess. And yet, activity still brews here. And Diablo Immortal will our, be our opportunity to go back and see what has gone awry. You know, in the next panel, we talk about the Countess. You will have a, we'll have a sneak <laughs> peek at what the Countess has been up to in the Forgotten Tower. So we've talked about the shared public zones. And here we have instance dungeons that are set aside for you and your party. It gives us a chance to do different things. In the outdoor world, the monsters respawn after a period of time. But in the instance dungeons, the monsters stay dead. This allows us to create a custom experience designed for four players with tougher monsters 
and bosses with fight mechanics designed to challenge you. All right, we've talked about the shared public zones, the instance dungeons, but what we really need to bring a, a game to life is a capital city. In the much the same way that World of Warcraft has Ogremar and Stormwind, we have Westmarch. Westmarch is the perfect choice for a capital city for Diablo Immortal. Before this, the only time we've seen Westmarch is at the beginning of Reaper of Souls. And at that point, the city is under assault by Malthel's forces. Much of Westmarch is either rubble or in flames. However, in the timeline of Diablo Immortal, Westmarch is still a thriving, vibrant, lively capital city. Let's take a look at some Westmarch concept art. In Westmarch, you can visit with some NPCs, go shopping, or maybe just examine your stash. But it's also a place where you can find and meet other players. Westmarch will be a hub of activity. It's the kind of shared online public space where you could be wandering around and run into a player wearing some awesome gear you've never seen before. That's right. So, so far we've talked about shared public zones, we have instance dungeons, and we have a capital city. And I know what many of you would also like to be able to see is to have a look at the classes and how the game plays. Yeah. To prepare, we've put together a short video so you can see what Diablo Immortal classes look like in action. All right, so 
Those are the six classes we'll have at launch for Diablo Immortal. But Diablo Immortal is a game that we hope to expand over time through live content patches. So we hope to ex add additional classes over time. And since I actually have the stage, sure. I get a vote. <laughs> so I would like to see in a future I would like to see the assassin. She was my favorite in Diablo 2. I want to play the assassin again. My, my right? favorite. Assassin. Oh. <laughs> the people have spoken. <laughs> my favorite in Diablo 2 was the necro. But for Diablo Immortal, I would love to see a witch doctor. All right. So we, we do look forward to being able to add additional classes over time. And we'll listen and, and be following the conversation in the community uh, to see what players are looking for and, and what makes sense. So we've taken a look at the classes, but I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how it controls. And at Blizzard, one of our values is control is king. And we always knew that one of the challenges in bringing a game like Diablo to mobile was always going to be the controls. Before it can feel like Diablo, it really has to play like Diablo. Implementing a virtual control stick in mobile is really tricky and hard to get right. To be honest, I was pretty skeptical we could even pull it off. But we did. For those of you here at BlizzCon, go play the demo. Playing is believing. OK, Chris was right. Getting <laughs> movement right is tricky. But moving is only an excuse to get to the enemy. That's where the real fun begins. Being on a touch screen device gives us new opportunities for controls in Diablo Immortal. For the first time in a Diablo game, you will be able to move and aim your skills at the same time. So here's how it works. In the video, you can see a wizard using a skill called Chill Wind. When you place your thumb down, we create a small targeting control right on the skill button. This allows you to aim the skill while it's being charged up. You put your, your thumb down, and you start to build up in damage and additional range. You can move, aim, and when you've got the enemy in your sights, release your thumb to just unleash wintry fury all over the enemy. In addition to charging up skills, you can also aim them or just activate them in a more traditional manner. Here we have an example of a barbarian using furious charge and aimed ability, and then following it up with whirlwind and activated one. T to use whirlwind, just tap the button, and then move around the screen using the normal movement controls. Now, it wouldn't be a new Diablo game without a few new abilities. And here we have the wizard using Lightning Nova. Lightning Nova creates a circle of bolts that travel out in all directions and then return back to you. Now, if you've moved in between, the bolts actually travel back to your new location. Lightning Nova is a ton of fun to use in all kinds of situations. But if you really want to see it shine, combine it with a mobility skill like Teleport, and an expert player can deal devastating damage. I want to see that again. Yeah. Was that you or was that Caleb? It wasn't me, it was Caleb. It was Caleb? Yeah. Good job. Much better than me. All right, so all classes in Diablo Immortal have 12 or more skills. And you'll be able to choose five of those skills to equip on your hotbar uh, in the active ability section at a time. New Diablo game, new skills, new gameplay, new gear, of course, cool looking gear. So here we have some early concept work for two of our classes, the Barbarian and the Wizard, showing their gear progression. And of course, we'll have Legendaries. We love the way Diablo III Legendaries change the way you play, and will carry forward that great, customizable gameplay into Diablo Immortal. I love the way the, the wizard on the bottom row in the right looks you know, really proud of herself for having <laughs> the best gear. Yeah, yeah, like, she's, mm. yeah, she's really proud. Except she's over there for everybody else. <laughs> Diablo Immortal is a social game. So we're adding social features to Diablo Immortal as well. When you log in and connect your Battle.net account, 
all of your friends will be right there waiting for you. This means you could be playing Diablo on your phone while chatting with your friend who's about to start a WoW raid, or message your buddies who are busy in Overwatch to tell them to hurry up and finish so they can come and help you kill a boss in Diablo Immortal. Now, as we mentioned in the opening ceremonies, we've partnered with NetEase Games to make Diablo Immortal. At this time, I'd like to invite a few folks to join us here on stage. Please join me in welcoming them. From Blizzard Entertainment, this is Joe Sue, senior producer. And from NetEase Games, Li Young, studio general manager. Wang Pang, lead designer. Wu Bo, lead artist. And Wang Jiahang, lead engineer. The studio general manager has prepared a few words that he would like to share. Just like those of you here at BlizzCon, we're all big fans of Blizzard games, especially Diablo. So when we the Everyone on the team was thrilled to learn about the opportunity to collaborate with our longtime partners at Blizzard on creating the next Diablo game. Diablo Immortal is a dream come true. The team's excitement and energy is deeply infused into the entire development process. 就像外的刚才提到的, 目前这个项目呢, 正在由IPOI神系列的忠实粉丝所组成的中美两大团队一起来研发, 目前这个项目正在紧锣密鼓的研发过程中, just as Wyatt said, uh, Diablo Immortal has been developed by two passionate groups of, of Diablo fans, and we combined to form one amazing team. We're very eager to bring you an awesome game very soon, and we hope you enjoy the demo on the show floor. 最后，让我仅代表爱黑破坏神不朽的开发团队，感谢大家的支持，也希望在不久的将来，我们可以相约在庇护之地，一起结伴组队杀敌。谢谢大家。On behalf of the Diablo Immortal development team, we would like to thank you, and we look forward to vanquishing evil with you in the world of Sanctuary. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. The passion that NetEase has for Diablo shows every day, and the partnership is going well. At this time, we have some time for questions. Uh, I think over here yeah. uh, on my left, there should be Brandy, our community manager. Brandy? She's there. I can okay. see her. She's oh, okay. waving at you. Awesome. Me. I can see her. And then over here on the right, we have Caleb, senior producer on Diablo Immortal. <laughs> Somebody pick a side. <laughs> okay. I pick this side. O over here? Come on I, up. I lost. Hi. Hello. Hey, Hi. I want to know, <coughs> know what happened to Druids. What happened to Druids? <laughs> you, guys, you, guys skipped, you guys skipped Druids and Diablo 3 and you guys skipped the Diablo Immortal. Well, we are planning on adding additional classes over time. So, you know, Matthew got a vote, Chris got a vote, you have a vote. It's kind of a three-way tie. We'll see what happens next. My World of Warcraft main's a druid, so... Oh, I see. <laughs> I see how it is. Um, so how long has Diablo Immortal been in development, and how is it affecting other Diablo projects? <laughs> well, you may or may not have heard. You, you want to take that one, or you want me to take it? It's, 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 it's almost, it's almost, uh, it's almost kind of memeable at one point, right? That we have multiple Diablo projects in the works. Uh, Diablo Immortal has uh, been an idea we've talked about for a long time. 
We've been working with NetEase for almost 10 years. They uh, work with Blizzard for all of our, all of our games, and uh, we're super excited about it. I like Cruz. Okay, my question is, uh, do you have a time frame when we will see this? Uh, when it's ready, <laughs> when it's done. The usual answer. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Bounce over. Caleb, did we have a question on the side as well? Sorry about that. Hey, so uh, when you guys were showing off the sizzle reel for the classes, it started off with like a really high poly, hair flowing model that didn't appear to be in the game. Are those in cinematics, or was that just for that trailer? Uh, the trailer actually, uh, those are in-game models, and they're rendered cinematically using a cinematic camera, and that is uh, the game running uh, on a mobile device. Are they yeah. going to appear any other time during the game, or is it just like a character select kind of thing? Uh, those particular sequences that you saw uh, are um, character selection. Our, our character <laughs> selection, and actually, if you uh, go play the demo, you can see them running. Uh, we have the, the demo running here, and, and those same sequences are available to watch. Awesome, thanks. You're welcome. Monk. <laughs> oh, yeah, Monk. Uh, there you go. The armor progression you showed, is that going to be a straight linear, or will the different pieces of gear supply a different uh, model of armor on the skeletons? This is sure. for one of you guys. So uh, definitely our plan is that all kinds of different legendary items can have their own unique look and not be part of a set. So it's, it's going to depend on what legendary items you're wearing that ultimately determines what, what your character looks like. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just the greeter. Love the cosplay. <laughs> this side. Hi, guys. Um, uh, my question is, as a theory crafter, is there going to be anything for like a skill tree, skill set, or anything like that where we'll be able to dig in and kind of customize how the spells will work for us as a player? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're still working out all of the systems. Um, unfortunately, we, we, we're still too far out to be able to say for sure. Uh, but we do want there to be you know, some, some nitty gritty uh, to dig into. Thank you. Yeah, I wish I had more to say at this time. We, I just, we love customizability, so you'll find it somehow. Yeah. Hi, uh, Lord Fluffy, face of Diablo. Um, <laughs> I was curious. Fluffy. <laughs> I was curious, I see a lot of mechanics that we've kind of been begging for in Diablo 3 in this. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any, uh, yeah, this, this, the current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, right? You can play on your tablet, too. Yes, it's also on the Switch. You're right. Hello. Uh, Hi. My question, is, my question is, how hard or how hard can the content be in this game? A lot of players like to go on Infernal mode, hardcore, stuff like that. So how hard can we expect the difficulty curve to get in this game? I think... I think it's, it's a little early for us to, to give a definite answer, but I think the best way to look at it is this is a true Diablo experience, and we want to make sure that that's the case. So do you have anything else you want to add on top of that? No, I, I think, I, I think that's, that's accurate. I mean, I think uh, we are looking to make sure that the game is challenging, and I think one of the nice things about Diablo is that in many respects, regards, there's, you know, portions of the game that are a little bit easier, and then there's portions of the game that are harder. And I think when you look at, you know, many action RPGs, depending on your mood, you want to be able to engage with content that fits uh, the mood that you're in for at that time when you sit down to play. Uh, yeah. My hope would be that Diablo Immortal would reflect that uh, flexibility in play session as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you go play the demo, we always make sure the demo is accessible to the widest audience possible, and sometimes it's the first time you play this game. So it won't represent the challenge you're expecting, but that's not representative of the final game in terms of Thank difficulty. You. 
Hi there, this actually might tie in with the last question a little bit, so my apologies. Um, me and my friends play pretty much extensively hardcore mode. Is there any chance that we might see that in this version? Uh, hardcore, uh, so <sighs> we're excited about bringing Diablo to mobile. Uh, the, the reality is that we're not sure that mobile platform is ready for the sort of hardcore situation where uh, a disconnect or something could cause you to lose your character. That said, uh, we do like the high stakes nature of hardcore. Uh, if there's something on the line or if there's something you could be excited about, if it's not just, you know, oh, you know, I lost 30 seconds or something because I died, uh, I think finding ways to make uh, the play sessions meaningful for you to care about dying or not dying, I think we'll look at those types of mechanics to make sure that there's, you know, stakes. Uh, but hardcore itself, I think, uh, is still an open question for us, but we're, we're not sure. It, it's, it's great that we can be on mobile and provide, like, a top-tier Diablo experience, but hardcore, uh, we'd have to wait and see. Thank you. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? Uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a fully, uh, fully fledged uh, Diablo experience on, on mobile, which everybody will get to play, and hopefully which will bring new heroes to Sanctuary, as well as welcoming our community back into it, and yeah. something we're very excited about. I should say, we're super excited about Diablo Immortal. We brought uh, Diablo to consoles, PC, Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, we're gamers. Everyone at Blizzard is gamers. We play games on all platforms, and we're really excited about making a new Diablo game for mobile. And the other thing is... The other thing to keep in mind is that every time we've launched a new Diablo game, especially on a new, uh, on, sort of on a new format, on a console, every time we've improved the experience and we brought that back to all the other versions of Diablo. So when we went on console, we brought things back on PC, we then improved both of them. The world of Diablo is vibrant. This is one of the best times to be part of this community, and I think the future is while not bright because Sanctuary is bleak, the future <laughs> for you is going to be awesome. Uh, All right, we have, about, we have time for about one or two more questions. Wow. No, we have time for one question. One it's got to be fast. Okay, well, this is going to be a good question then because it's about why it's going to mobile. Okay. In particular, the majority of the games are PC-oriented with Blizzard, Hearthstone being one of the other mobile games. Why bring it to mobile? Are you trying to reach a new audience of players? We are always trying to reach a new audience. We always want more people to join the Blizzard community. We want more people to come to BlizzCon, more people to play Diablo. And this is a great opportunity for that. And we're very excited about it. Play Diablo anytime, anywhere with anyone sounds pretty awesome to me. Yeah, I would say that our mobile phones are actually super powerful supercomputers. I think we treat them, you know, for social media and text messaging, but they can do so much more than that. If you look at the technical specs on a mobile phone today and compare to supercomputers from just five years ago, like, we're walking around with full-fledged gaming devices in our pocket, and we want to make a full-fledged game for mobile. All right, so unfortunately we are running out of time, but we have another panel. Tomorrow, when is it, Wyatt? It's at 5.45 tomorrow. You can join Matthew and I here on the Mythic stage. We'll talk more about Diablo Immortal, the world, the story, the history leading up to the events, since this game does take place in between Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. Okay, but this is deceptive because <laughs> it's missing something. What else are you going to be talking about during that panel? Well, the, the characters? Yeah. Oh, and some skills. And some skills. And some, and some skills. new okay. skills. All right. right. All right. All right. Yes. Uh, more we'll have in more depth. Don't forget the skills. countess. You promised the countess. Yeah. And the countess. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, and have an epic BlizzCon. Thank you for attending Diablo What's Next. Coming up. 
Overwatch, what's next?